Putin's ally. Future of the world will be decided in Ukraine. The Ukraine conflict is among the major events that will determine the future of the world and the West is emerging weaker from it, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko claimed. The leader of Belarus, a close Russian ally, addressed the situation in Ukraine during a keynote speech to the All Belarusian People's Assembly, a gathering of officials and public figures. He contrasted Kiev's policies with those of Minsk, arguing that unlike its southern neighbor, his nation has preserved its independence under Western pressure. Everyone understands that today's Ukraine is a military range, where the future of the world order is partially decided. The largest nuclear powers indirectly, and now even directly, are waging a war on its territory, Lukashenko stated. Meanwhile, his authorities have sunk to the level of striking a bargain with the West to exchange weapons for the lives of Ukrainians. Watching this is painful, he added. Kiev has miscalculated, Lukashenko argued, because whoever is willing to serve a master for scraps will sooner or later lose. Ukraine is risking its statehood after betraying its past and traditions, he also warned. The Belarusian leader described the entire conflict as the latest clash between the West and the East and suggested that neither side has become stronger. The outcome of the confrontation will not save the existing order, Lukashenko further predicted. He urged the US and its allies to accept that their future role will be restricted as one of several centers of power that determine world affairs. The US and its allies believe that they can supply Ukraine with enough weaponry to exhaust Russian military forces and material. Ukraine hopes that Western support intensifies enough and lasts long enough to push Russia out of the country. Russia believes that it can wait until the West is tired of supporting Ukraine and then move to control the country with a pro-Russian puppet government backed by Russian military might. All sides are exhausted by this conflict. Many are wondering how long they can continue operating at this level of intensity. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko alleged that the opposition planned to seize a district in the west of the country and request support from NATO troops. Representatives of the Belarusian opposition, who have gone abroad, want to seize one of the regions in the country, declare a new government there and send NATO troops there, President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko said, at least to seize one, I don't know why they chose it, the Kobrin district, they talk a lot about it there. But it's not near the border itself. There are closer to the borders. No, the Kobrin district. Seize, declare power, contact NATO, send in troops, Lukashenko said. Speaking at the All Belarusian People's Assembly, Lukashenko also appealed to the oppositionists who are planning a forceful seizure of power in Belarus, with an appeal not to put their relatives who live in the country at risk. You have some property here. I advise you to forget about her, but don't put your relatives at risk. The President of the Republic said, the day before, Lukashenko said that the population of Belarus has never lived as well as it does now, while the country must develop further one way or another. He also expressed confidence that the real power of the Belarusian state is measured by its desire to make the world a better place. Lukashenko complained about 120,000 Ukrainian troops on the border with Belarus and announced a prevented UAV attack from Lithuanian territory on targets in Minsk. It was not clear if Lukashenko provided any evidence for such a plan. All Belarus's main opposition figures are in prison or have been forced into exile. Russians would take years to capture Kharkiv, Ukraine's National Guard chief. The Russians may attempt to conquer Kharkiv, but they will fail because it will cost significant resources and time. Brigadier General Oleksandr Pivnenko, commander of the National Guard of Ukraine, said this in an interview with Liga media outlet. They can try to conquer Kharkiv, but it won't work. They can only act conventionally, two or three fronts, as distractions, one primary. However, in the case of Kharkiv, this approach will be difficult because attempts to damage essential and civilian infrastructure will persist. They'll have to struggle for years to seize Kharkiv. Consider how long Bakhmut and Avdiivka held. It is easier for the Russians to change the leadership of the Russian Federation and forsake their goals than to conquer the city, resulting in the deaths of thousands more soldiers. Commenting on the new possible summer offensive of the Russians, Pivnenko assured that it will not achieve its goal, Pivnenko said. Russia will not be able to take either Zaporizhia or Kharkiv, even if they try something in the direction of Kyiv, that's just for show. Although I expect some difficulties, there will be an onslaught, 
They will try to move forward where they can, he added. Recently, the Financial Times, citing Ukrainian and Western officials, wrote that Russia may be gearing up for a large-scale offensive in late spring or summer, intending to seize more territory in Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk and Zaporizhia oblasts. In March 2024, the Center for Countering Disinformation at Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council noted that the information about Russian forces preparing to launch an offensive on the city of Kharkiv is part of Russia's propaganda of fear campaign and is not true.